So now let's see, the one who attained success, what were the things that he did? First, he tried to find cleansing, that, he tried to cleanse himself from within. To help himself, clean, to help cleanse himself, what are the processes he engaged in? وَذَكَرَ اسْمَ رَبِّهِ He remembered the name of his Lord. He mentioned the name of his Lord. Now Allah didn't say اسْمَ اللَّهِ, He said اسْمَ رَبِّهِ When he remembered that his name, he acknowledged that that is not just anyone's name. He's not just the Creator, not just the wise. The wise one, the Creator, the knowledgeable one happens to be my master. And I happen to be his slave. And if he is my master and I am his slave, I better do, I better act like a slave. What is the first act of a slave, practical act of a slave? The very next words, فَصَلَّى Then as a result he made salah. Then he prayed. Then he prayed. And this is an interesting nuance and play on words. By the way, the beginning was سَبِّحِ اسْمَ رَبِّكِ And here, uh, وَذَكَرَ اسْمَ رَبِّهِ for everybody else. For the Messenger, a higher thing. Be conscious of the perfection of the name of your Lord, the Supreme. And for anyone, the beginning point. Just mention the name of your Lord. And the first thing that will be a consequence of that naturally will be, you will want to connect to that Lord by means of salah. Salah. Okay? So the contrast is, the one who attains the ultimate success, what's the final practical manifestation of it? Salah. One final nuance of this word here, Allah said, إِنَّهُ يَعْلَمُ الْجَهْرَ وَمَا يَخْفَى Right? So it applies to our salah. He knows the outside of our salah and what is also hiding inside the salah. We're standing in one row all together. Everybody made wudu. Everybody's praying in the right direction. Everybody's making sajda in the same direction. Everybody's listening to the same qira. But one person is thinking about what's home for dinner. And the other person is thinking, what did I leave halfway at work? And the other person is thinking, why, why is this guy next to me, you know, a little bit behind or a little bit ahead? And the one person is remembering Allah. One person is actually remembering the name of his Lord and actually engaged and connected with Allah. They've left the world around them. They've completely connected themselves to Allah. May Allah give us that khushu in our salawat. Then Allah tells us what, what keeps humanity from finding this right priority of success. You know, in the end, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ, right? He attained success. If you ask any human being, what are they running after? Success. A student is running after success by graduating. A candidate is running for success by getting... So how come when Allah has explained this, people are dis- distracted from this ultimate success? What are they running after? Allah Azza wa Jal makes you realize when He's giving you these lessons, who do they apply to? Don't think of someone else, think of yourself. بَلْ تُؤْثِرُونَ He doesn't even say, بَلِ النَّاسِ يُؤْثِرُونَ People prefer worldly life. No, no, no. He said, you, you have given preference. You have compare two things and you've decided one is more valuable to you this is athara by the way to give to compare two things and decide one is more valuable to you than the other and you give it more time and preference and priority you know before allah talks about his authority as rabbil alamin rabb is his authority even in the fatiha what did he mention first he didn't begin the fatiha with rabbul alamin what did he begin it with alhamdulillah hamd first you acknowledge the praise of allah you acknowledge a lord that's given you limbs i didn't pay for my hands I didn't pay for my eyes. You have the exact opposite concept with non-Muslims. They'll say, if there's a God, how come there's cancer? How come this guy, this kid is born with one eye? How come there's this? How come there's that? And we say, you know what? You people need to understand. He is Rabb. He doesn't owe you anything. You didn't sign any contract that says, five fingers on the left and five fingers on the right. And this should be equal size. You didn't, you didn't earn any of this. He gave it to you. He gave it. He didn't give it to you. It wasn't yours to begin with. To think, to say, this is my hand. The Muslim doesn't say, this is my hand. We say it temporarily, but who does it belong to? You know why this belongs to Allah? Because we say, inna lillah. We belong to Allah. <laughs> Forget my hand, or my eye, or my clothes, or my money, or my health, or my car. You know, I belong to Allah. It's a completely different attitude. So we have this hamd of Allah, which helps us appreciate His authority. Illa an yu'minu billahi al-aziz al-hamid. But then he goes further. When you acknowledge Allah's authority, when you acknowledge Allah's hamd, where do you see His authority and His hamd manifest? الَّذِي لَهُ مُلْكُ السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ The one exclusively in whose possession is the sovereignty. Mulk is sovereignty. The one who has sovereignty over the heavens and the earth. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, the one who belo- to whom the sovereignty of the heavens and the earth belongs. Let me tell you something about sovereignty and mulk. 
When you're sovereign over something, that means nobody else can question what you do. A sovereign nation, what's a sovereign nation? No other nation can tell them what to do. They have their sovereign law. A sovereign ruler like an ancient king, nobody can tell him, hey king, this is a bad idea, this is a good idea. It's out of the question. They're, they have absolute authority. So, الَّذِي لَهُ مُلْكُ السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ The one who has sovereignty over the heavens and the earth. This was part of their iman. This was even worse for the kuffar. How can they acknowledge the sovereignty of Allah? Not questioning anything from Allah. And this is, the real problem in iman is not believing in a God that created the universe, or created the heavens and the earth, and is merciful and powerful. Most people have no problem believing that. You know where the problem starts? When you give God sovereignty, when you say, He has the authority, He has complete control, and He is the only one rightful of that control. So His authority comes from His sovereignty. Why, is he, why is, does He have authority? Because He has the mulk. He owns it. I have authority over this bag because it belongs to who? It's, it's mine, that's why I have authority over it. Allah owns all of this, so He has authority over it. So at the root of all of this is Allah's milkiyah, His ownership. From the word Jumu'ah, and our congregations are a gathering. But you know what? That means our gathering is a reminder of a much larger gathering, which is Day of Judgment. There are rehearsals for Judgment Day. Salat in Jama'ah is a rehearsal for Judgment Day at a smaller level. Yomul Jumu'ah is a rehearsal for Judgment Day at a bigger level. Hajj is a rehearsal for Judgment Day at the largest level. The, the religious spiritual exercises we have in Islam are all somehow tied to Judgment Day. What was the subject right before? Running away from death. The Muslim comes to Jumu'ah, he can't run from death. He's being reminded of Judgment Day just by the fact that he's gathered. Just by the fact that he's gathered. Subhanallah, it's, it's embedded, it's installed into the mechanics of our religion. فَسْعَوْا لَا ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ Then rush to the remembrance of Allah. فَسْعَوْا Rush. Rush. Make it a priority. I didn't ask you for the whole day. I asked you for a part of the day. So why wouldn't you rush? Why would you take it easy for Jumu'ah? I didn't, I, the nation before you was given the entire day to give worship. I've asked you for so much less. Why would you be lax about that? فَسْعَوْا إِلَىٰ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ Rush to the remembrance of Allah. And the entire Jumu'ah from beginning to end is described not فَسْعَوْا إِلَىٰ الْخُطْبَةِ فَسْعَوْا إِلَىٰ الْإِجْتِمَاعِ فَسْعَوْا إِلَىٰ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ The essence of Friday prayer is remembering Allah. It's the remembrance of Allah. Which means our Friday prayer, as we're rushing to it, we should be doing extra dhikr of Allah. Our intention for walking into the Jum'ah is not to be entertained, not to be given new information. The khatib never talks about what's current events, or this or that. You didn't come there for current events. That's your idea of what Jum'ah is. Allah is telling you khutbah is about what? Dhikrullah. Remembering Allah. As a people. وَذَرُ الْبَيِّعِ Leave business. Leave sales. Literally sales. Now, just a little bit about فَسْعَوْا إِلَىٰ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ In our times, in, from the word Jumu'ah, and our congregations are a gathering. But you know what? That means our gathering is a reminder of a much larger gathering, which is Day of Judgment. There are rehearsals for Judgment Day. Salat in Jama'ah is a rehearsal for Judgment Day at a smaller level. Yomul Jumu'ah is a rehearsal for Judgment Day at a bigger level. Hajj is a rehearsal for Judgment Day at the largest level. The, the religious spiritual exercises we have in Islam are all somehow tied to Judgment Day. What was the subject right before? Running away from death. The Muslim comes to Jumu'ah, he can't run from death. He's being reminded of Judgment Day just by the fact that he's gathered. Just by the fact that he's gathered. Subhanallah. It's, it's embedded, it's installed into the mechanics of our religion. فَسْعَوْا إِلَىٰ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ Then rush to the remembrance of Allah. فَسْعَوْا Rush. Rush. Make it a priority. I didn't ask you for the whole day. I asked you for a part of the day. So why wouldn't you rush? Why would you take it easy for Jumu'ah? I didn't. I, the nation before you was given the entire day to give worship. I've asked you for so much less. Why would you be lax about that? فَسْعَوْا إِلَىٰ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ Rush to the remembrance of Allah. And the entire Jumu'ah from beginning to end is described not فَسْعَوْا إِلَى الْخُطْبَةِ فَسْعَوْا إِلَى الْإِجْتِمَاعِ فَسْعَوْا إِلَى ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ The essence of Friday prayer is remembering Allah.
It's the remembrance of Allah, which means our Friday prayer, as we're rushing to it, we should be doing extra dhikr of Allah. Our intention for walking into the Jum'ah is not to be entertained, not to be given new information. The khatib never talks about what's current events, or this or that. You didn't come there for current events. That's your idea of what Jum'ah is. Allah is telling you khutbah is about what? Dhikrullah, remembering Allah as a people. وَذَرُ الْبَيِّعِ Leave business, leave sales, literally sales. Now, just a little bit about Fas'awu la dhikrillah in our times. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. If you enjoyed this video, please do share it with friends and family. If you want to see more videos from this series, click on the box at the top. If you want to see other videos, click on the box at the bottom. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Thanks.